We are in AP Calculus AB. We are on worksheet 11-3. We're getting very low on worksheets. We have this one and then two more worksheets to do until we are done learning new material, at least for AB, right? Um, here we go. This is going to be the key. Again, everything needs a calculator for both front and back. Uh, number one, we have... I should turn the music off. Um, in the figure above, we have r, and the lower function is this 4 natural log of 3 minus x, and the top function is y is equal to 6. And then x is equal to 2 because that's where it stops here at x is equal to 2. Um, I'm going to go ahead and label what's happening in this diagram just in case we get confused. This bottom function is 4 natural log of 3 minus x, and then this top function is y equals 6 because we're going to have to do top minus bottom, so this, I guess, is going to label this y as well. Um, the region R is the base of the solid, and for this solid, each cross-section is perpendicular to the x-axis. So whenever I see perpendicular to the x-axis right here, I automatically think and convert this in my head, I'm doing d of x. So everything is going to have an x instead of a y. And it's a square. So I need to find the volume of that solid. So here we go. It's going to be an integral because I need to count out an infinite number of those um, square prisms. Um, it's going to go from 0 to 2, y to 2, because that's where the x-coordinate is at 2. Um, and then from here, I'm going to do top minus bottom. The top is 6 minus the bottom. The bottom is 4 natural log of 3 minus x. 4 natural log of 3 minus x. And then all of this thing, dx. And then I just plug it in my calculator and I'm done. What about squared? Oh my gosh, I forgot the square. Thank you, Arrow. It's a square, so that's squared. It's top minus bottom squared. Um, this is going to get really confusing when we talk about um, other lessons like circles and stuff when we rotate it around because we're going to have lots of squares. Um, this one is just top minus bottom squared. All right, so I come here on my calculator. Um, I'm going to, I think I can probably just do this without even entering in anything in my y1 and y2. I'm just going to do math 9, the integral of, and I'm going to do parentheses, a double set of parentheses because I need to do 6 minus 4 natural log of 3 minus x, that quantity, squared. Okay, so now I've typed in my function, comma, so with respect to x, from uh, 0 to 2. And what did I miss? Hit 2, go to... Oh, there's another parentheses for the natural log. So if you need to enter things without typing over, by default this will type over it, so second, delete, will insert, and I can type in another comma, and now it'll say, you're good. 26.26 and then rounding 7, 2.7, so 26.267, All right, let's try another one. This is going to be number 2. Um, another region R, one of them is sine, one of them is x cubed. Which one is which? Well, a sine wave by default goes up and down and has the same amplitude. So this amplitude is 1, this amplitude is 1. So this must be our sine wave. So I'll label this one as sine of pi x. And this bottom one is going to be uh, x cubed minus 4x. Um, and then we have perpendicular to the x-axis. So I automatically assume that's going to be a dx instead of dy. And by the way, if it says perpendicular to the x-axis, one thing I am remembering for the notes that I should have put in the notes is we should have said everything needs to be written in terms of x and y. So like if it's perpendicular to the x-axis, I'll have something like y is equal to blah, 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 blah. If it's perpendicular to the y-axis, I should have x is equal to blah, 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 blah. I do have to switch it. x is equal to blah, 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 blah. And that does affect you on the pretest, so that's why I'm pointing it out now. Um, find the volume of the solid. It's just top minus bottom squared. So here we go. We do have to write it down. You get points for writing it down. It's going to be the integral between 0 and 2 of top, which was our sine of pi x minus the bottom, which is, okay, you need parentheses because you need to distribute that negative, so be careful with your parentheses. x to the power of 3 minus 4x. And this entire quantity squared dx. Squared dx. All right calculator go so I'm gonna go math 9 my first function is gonna and I need to do set another set of parentheses it's gonna be sine of second to the power of pi x and parentheses for sine minus start parentheses x to the power of 3 minus 4 x and the parentheses for that second integral and then end the parentheses so that I can square this thing 
So square it, and then comma with respect to x from 0 to 2. All right, if I did everything here correctly, I should get 9.978, and I do get 9.978. So this is equal to 9.978. At this point, it's just a matter of typing it into the calculator correctly. Um, that was number two, this is number three. Um, f of x is that function, g of x is that function. It's gonna be top minus bottom, it's gonna be f of x minus g of x. Um, perpendicular to the x-axis, are all of these gonna be like that? It might be repetitive, but again, we're gonna have something in terms of d of x, so I'm gonna have a y equals. y equals blah, blah, blah. So I don't have to change any of these. Um, sometimes you'll have to rewrite them in terms of x. Um, find the volume of the solid. <laughs> solid. Um, we know that they intersect at zero and one, so it's gonna be integral between zero and one of, I'm just gonna write f of x minus g of x because I'm nice and lazy, f of x minus g of x, but I will have to type it into the calculator. This function squared d of x, squared d of x. All right, let's clear out of all that stuff. So I'm gonna do, mm, this is probably gonna get confusing with parentheses, I think I can do it, math nine, the integral of two, oh, I need to put parentheses so I can square it. So two x and then start my parentheses, one minus x and my parentheses. Okay, that's going to be minus the g of x, which is 3 in parentheses, x minus 1, and parentheses, and then square root of x also, so second square root of x, and parentheses for the square root, and then now end the parentheses for the entire subtraction problem, and then I'm going to square that, and then with respect to x, from 0 to 1. And hopefully I get 1.493, and I do indeed get 1.493. 1.493. We're on to the back, number four. The back is a little bit different, yeah. So we have to draw every single one of these graphs. So practice drawing your graphs, everyone. And this is where it's really important to know what arctan <laughs> looks like. Um, I don't even remember what arctan looks like, so I... Oh, you, to you have a graphing calculator. What does arctan look like? Well, let's come here and do sh second tan of x, and then it's going to be between, does it tell you between, oh, between 0 and 1. So I can set my window here between 0 and 1, and then hit zoom 0, and I can figure out what arctan looks like. Do we still have to draw it? If we can see it from the graphing calculator? Looks like that. Um, you should practice drawing it. And I guess I should draw the other function too. So what's being subtracted? It's the line y equals 3, so I can just type in y equals 3 <laughs> right there, and I can hit zoom 0, and I can see exactly what that function will look like. And so, oh, it's way lower than I thought. It's like less than a quarter. And then, okay, so this area right here is the thing I'm trying to find. I can screenshot that to make my notes really nice compared to last year. So this is the, the graph that you can see if you graphed it with the correct window. So really what I'm trying to find, if I was labeling this thing, is what is, if I drew a line right there, what is this area right here, not this area down here. You're kind of subtracting that area. That's what we're really trying to find. And again, I know that this is a height of 3. This um, is an x-coordinate of 1. So let me move this up here. This is a y-coordinate of 3. This has an x-coordinate of 1. How do I know that? It says x is equal to 1. That's where it ends. Why do I know it's y equals 3? Because it tells me right there. Um, all right, so I just need to find the volume. Clearly, uh, 3 is bigger, so that's going to be the top. So I'm going to say the integral from 0 to 1 of the top, which is 3, minus the bottom, which is arctan, so tan to the negative 1, of x. And then all of this thing squared dx. That thing squared d of x. Okay, what is that? Let's find out. So second quit. Let's get rid of that. It's going to be math 9 of start my parentheses 3 minus second tan of x and parentheses um, and the parentheses for the entire subtraction problem and then square that function with respect to x from 0 to 1 enter and my notes are saying 6.612 and that's indeed what we get 6.612 um, next one this is going to be number five Ooh, I have no idea what that looks like. It reminds me of a bell curve function, though. It's probably going to be something similar to that. So my y equals... So do I have a top function? Um, I have the end at x equals to 3. Um, 
Oh, the y-axis and the x-axis. So from zero, my window is going to be from zero because that's the beginning of the y-axis, right? And the x-axis, I don't know. So I'm just going to have to guesstimate there. Oh, wait, this tells me three. So my x ends down here. My x max is three because of x equals three. Um, and then my y equals, um, I don't know. I don't have two functions. I just have one. So this one function, I'm going to retype it in. It's, let me clear it first. It's um, the... E, where am I? E to the power of negative x to the power of 2. Cool, and then I'm going to do zoom 0, zoom 0, and see what that looks like. And I might as well set up my integral as well. It's only one function, so it's going to be the integral from 0 to 3 of that function of e to the negative x. Oh, did I forget to divide by 2? I did. Divide by 2. Let me come back and fix that. Um, it probably looks similar to that. Divide by 2 means it's going to be shifted more to the right, I'm guessing. Um, x squared divided by 2. And now let's zoom to 0 that. We'll get the correct function. Um, this thing, d of x, I'm really subtracting 0. Why am I subtracting 0? Because I'm, it's the y-axis. y-axis is y equals 0. Or sorry, x-axis. x-axis is y is equal to 0. So I'm really subtracting 0 here. But I need to square that, so let me come back here, move my d of x over. It's a square cross-section perpendicular to the x-axis, again, so it's still d of x, and this function is being squared. All right, let's see if I got the right function. That's what it looks like, so let me copy-paste that into my notes. It's going to look like that. And I can label what's happening here. Um, what is this? <laughs> oh, that's super cute. Hold on. <laughs> what does he look like he's playing with? Is that shaving cream? Probably. I remember doing that in preschool. That's super cute. Um, it'll be a cool little time capsule in the movie, too, because it'll be like a year later when he's bigger. Um, all right. Um, we know that that is our function, and it ends at 3 here. Okay, time to actually calculate this thing. So I'm going to do second mode, clear out of this thing. Math 9 integral of k. Okay, got to type in this function. I'm going to start my parentheses so I can square it at the very end. It's going to be second e to the power of negative x squared. Oop, that's not the square button. Squared. Ah, come back here. Overwrite that with a square. Um, divided by 2. And then end the parentheses for e. And end the parentheses for the entire function. Now I'm going to square it. I guess I didn't really need the extra set of parentheses there, did I? Common with respect to x from 0 to 3. All right, my answer key is telling me 0.886, and I do indeed get 0.886, so 0 0.886. On to number 6. So I actually can visualize what, what y equals... part of the graph was that, the inside? Uh, yeah, it's always between the function and the x-axis, because that's what it says right here. x-axis and that function. Yeah, good question. Um, number 6. Uh, y equals 4x squared, I know that's a very steepish parabola, and x equals 1. Ooh, okay, so x equals 1 means I'm cutting it off, and I'm talking about the first quadrant, so I'm probably talking about this tiny shape down there. Let's see what our graph actually looks like. Um, let's clear that. It's going to be y equals, get rid of you, it's going to be 4x squared, and x is equal to 1, and it's in the first quadrant. Did it say that? Yeah, first quadrant, so that means that my window is going to be between 0, because it's first quadrant, and x max is 1. So let's zoom 0 that guy while we're waiting. Let's come back and set up our integral. It's going to be the integral between 0 and 1 of something. Um, is it going to be 4x squared minus something minus 0? Oh, because it's probably the x-axis. x-axis is always y is equal to 0, so I'm really doing... 4x squared minus that 0, which is pointless. So I'm just going to say 4x squared. <laughs> and I'm going to square that thing and then dxify it. What does our graph look like? Oh, yeah. It was, it's zoomed in a lot further, so that's probably why it looks like that. But I knew that the general shape was going to be, um, how did I describe that? A curvy triangle. Technically, it's the bottom piece of the quadratic, Mr. Sindel. Um, and then this x-coordinate here is 1. All right, all that I need to do now, and again, I'm finding this area right here because it's between the curve and the x-axis. Um, I need to come into my calculator. I'm going to do second mode to quit out of this. My 
next move is math nine. Um, I'm gonna do, I could really just type this in. It's 16 x to the power of four. It's a quick shortcut, right? 16 x to the power of four um, with respect to x from zero to one. And I got 3.2, <laughs> exactly. So just to make sure that we don't get docked or anything. It, you don't get docked ever if you just write 3.2, but I'm gonna write 3.200. Zero, zero. Um, just because I always have three decimals. I know that I rounded correctly, just in case there were uh, decimals. Um, this is kind of a good point to go over to. If you have your calculator and you go to mode, you can come down here to where it says float. Float says, give me as many decimals as you can. If you come over here and hover over the three and hit enter, it will always, always round to three decimal places and you never need to worry about it ever again. Which means if I come back here, second mode, and I hit second enter, it will round to three decimal places, exactly like I was doing before. So kind of a cool little function. You never have to round. Um, I'll probably leave that for the rest of the video and then I'll forget about it next video. We now have x squared plus one, which is a quadratic that has been shifted up in the vertical direction by one unit. And the vertical line, x is equal to two, so we know it's gonna be between zero and two, I'm guessing. And yeah, it's in the first quadrant, which means uh, we don't have any neg negative x coordinates. So what does this thing look like? I can already, already visualize it. It's gonna be very similar to the last one, except it's shifted up one. So my y equals uh, x squared. So I'm just gonna delete you x squared. Uh, plus one and my window is going to be between zero and two now because it tells us our x is two i'm going to zoom zero you to visualize you and i guess it's not really necessary to visualize them i think it might mess us up so i'm going to do it there's going to be that one problem that's probably going to be on the test where it's backwards of what you think and then you'll get a negative area and then you'll be like oh it's positive and then you'll get full points i think you'll get full points you'll have to rewrite the integral so that it is the correct way, because I think you do lose a point if you do them backwards. So just, if you get a negative answer, go back and just uh, rewrite it correctly. Then you'll get full points. So you don't actually need to graph these, I suppose. Um, this is between two and how do we do this integral? It's gonna be integral between zero and two of our x squared plus one uh, minus zero, but that's kind of silly. And then that's gonna be squared d of x. Um, does anyone want me to show you how to do this on the calculator or do you just want the answer? I think you guys are good? Okay. I feel like I'm kind of overworking myself when you guys are so much faster than me. I think Arrow just already finished. Seven, three, three. There's our final answer. And number eight. Um, base of the solid region is enclosed by this thing. In uh, every cross section is to the x-axis. So I've never given you a homework problem with cross section perpendicular to the y-axis. So everything is with d of x. We never had to rewrite anything, but just as I will say like the fifth time, if it says perpendicular to the y-axis, this needs to be changed over. So you have to mo move everything over that side. For example, if this was a y-axis question, you'd say, okay, divide both sides by three. So I have y over three, and then you have to square root that. And then you have to add two to that. Well, this is now written in terms of x. And now I can say this function, the integral of that function, dy. That's what I would do if you ever had a y-axis question. In fact, it makes me think about going back in the homework and maybe adding just one of those questions in. I know that John likes to keep things as simple as possible for the homework, because if you if you understand this homework perfectly, then you have a three on the AP test. That's the whole idea. Make it as easy as possible to get the three. So if everything here makes sense and you can totally remember this for the AP test, you're good, right? Um, you just have to be able to apply it to maybe slightly new types of questions that you haven't seen before. Um, this is gonna be an integral between zero and, oh, where? It doesn't tell us. Okay, so let's definitely graph this one. Uh, y is equal to, let's clear out of you, um, three times the quantity of x minus, oh, that's a negative, x minus two quantity squared. And we don't know what it's gonna look like, so I'm gonna, uh, I don't know, my window's gonna be between zero and 10. Do I wanna do zero and 10? Is it gonna be always positive? Does it say in the first quadrant anywhere? No, okay, so maybe I should make this like a negative 10 to 10. Oh, okay, I can actually see what this function is gonna look like. Whenever you have something on the inside, it's gonna shift everything to the right too, so it is gonna be more on the positive side. But let's go ahead and zoom zero this guy. What does it look like? What's going on? Okay, there it is. Um, and 
the volume of the solid. Hmm, I'm trying to figure out what are our bounds here. And the volume is the base of the region and the coordinate of the axes. Hmm. I'm looking at the graph and I can make the bounds from negative a thousand to a thousand. There's nothing that says in this problem what needs to happen. Should we choose a random point and then just play with it? <laughs> okay, I'll make a note to myself for next year. Um, I didn't see it last time, even though there's clearly an error. Fix this! Okay, I'll fix it for next year. Hopefully I'll see that. Um, let's say, I oh don't know, between zero and four, because that's centered over negative two. Um, how would I say that? Ooh, we can try a harder problem if you want. Let's make this a harder problem. Let's say um, volume between um, y equals 12 in that section right there. That will make it a fun problem because now you have to solve for what's happening. I'll continue the video um, in a sec. All right, so I didn't really explain this before everyone headed out, but I kind of want to find the volume in between y equals 12 and this function. So what that means is I come back over here to my calculator and I say y is equal to 12. And then I'm going to, I guess I could do zoom zero again. Zoom zero. Where is 12? 12 is, well, okay, it's going to graph that function yet again. 12 is, oh, 12 is way down there, and it looks like it's intersecting the y-axis. So I'm going to change my window here from, I don't know, negative 1 to 5 to zoom in a little bit more. So zoom 0. Let's see how close that is. Okay, it's getting closer, and, oh, it does go through. Okay, so I'm pretty sure that point is 12. <laughs> yeah, because it's the 12. Okay, so let me zoom again. So my window is going to be between 0 and... Okay, let's do a bit of math here. So when is it going to intersect again? So if I set this equal to 12, so here's my scratch work. You don't need to do this, but I'm going to say if 12 is equal to 3 times the quantity of x minus 2 quantity squared, divide both sides by 3, I get 4 is equal to x minus 2 quantity squared. Square both sides, I get 2 is equal to x minus 2. And I have to do plus or minus, right? Plus or minus 2. So one of them, when I add 2, I get uh, 2. I get a x is equal to 2 plus or minus 2. That's the answer. And that means x is equal to 4 and x is equal to 0. So my interval should be between 0 and 4. Uh, that's what I was going to guess anyway. Um, so now let's uh, zoom 0 this guy with the correct interval. And it should be the exact type of graph that we want. Boom. Nice. So we're trying to find this integral, not the area underneath now. So let me put this picture in the notes and say this right here is the area that we're trying to find and for the record this is going to be let me draw something this is going to be between 0 and 4 and has a height of 12 up here that 12 can look a little bit neater um, so 0 to 4 of this function so the top function is going to be 12 the bottom function is going to be this 3 times the quantity of x minus 2 quantity squared. And then all of this is going to be squared dx. Whew, lots of math happening there. I did make it more complex than it probably needed to be, but I'm kind of interested to see what is this area right here. And I guess these lines could come down all the way. There it is. All right. So to find that, we come to our calculator and we say, Second mode to put out this clear. We can say what is math nine integral of okay, start my parentheses so I can square it. Twelve minus three in parentheses x minus two and the parentheses square that. Okay. And the parentheses. Now the subtraction problem has been kept in the parentheses. I'm gonna square the entire uh, difference and then I'm gonna do comma with respect to x from zero to four. Hit enter. You get 307.2, exactly. So 307.200, I suppose. This is equal to 307.200. Nice. And that's all I have for Worksheet 11-3. See you guys tomorrow.